Hey guys, Engineer Book Pro here. Let's put our glasses on and dive into an iPhone 4. So imagine this, you're an engineer, it's 2010, the iPhone 4 is coming out. How are you gonna test it? Well, with a device just like this. So if we turn on the phone, we can see it says confidential and proprietary. This is a pretty standard legal disclosure on all prototype Apple products designed so, you know, if you leave your iPhone in a bar, you actually call a phone number and hopefully give it back to Apple. Pretty standard looking iPhone initially. However, once you begin swiping, you see a lot more. These are all testing apps that serve various purposes in real world testing of the device. There's Wi-Fi survey. It shows a nice little graph of Wi-Fi around you. TV out tester. It's used to basically test the iPhone's ability to connect to TV. Back in the day, there was a 30 pin to AV adapter cable in the event you really wanted to plug your phone into a TV for some reason. You have tanks. It's used mainly to test Game Center. Um, I believe it does sometime work, not really. It's kind of funny because you can actually go through Game Center and pretty easily find some engineers because they are on the leaderboard for tanks. Uh, there's Flytrap. It does remind you you should have a passcode because it is good practice to have your phone locked. Now, unfortunately, obviously, whatever engineer who had this phone didn't have a passcode and, well, seemingly didn't care a whole lot about this phone because it's in my hands now. So we do things. You can make quick bugs around application, uh, location, or call issues, as well as FaceTime. You can see about scary little Apple Confidential. There's even a handy dandy user guide to help you use Flytrap. There's also logs, and unfortunately, this phone has quite a lot of crashes, as you can see. It's not very happy with itself, but you know, that is what it is at the end of the day. Scouting is probably one of the most interesting apps is it actually has floor by floor diagrams of different parts of Infinite Loop. Now, I don't wanna, you know, show too, too much as some of the phone extensions are potentially still valid as well as the fact it is a floor plan, but they are very out of date. But you can see what is, you know, infinite loop. They even have an X-Files conference room, apparently. There's roster, which I assume is some kind of employee-only way to search other employees. Nowadays, they use Apple Directory, which is, well, as it sounds, a directory of people at Apple. There's chats and other functions in it. It's a pretty rudimentary way to connect with other employees. There's NetGage, which is quite literally just a internet speed test app, but you know, Apple's gotta do it themselves. There's iTester, which is actually a really powerful tool in its skeuomorphic greatness that can be used to pretty much test just about anything. It's designed more so for automated tests as you can build your test per se and have it run a whole bunch of different automations on device and then it'll let you know how it completes. It has Bluetooth, location, phone, VPN, and Wi-Fi capabilities. It can do pretty much anything. There's Mule, which has to do with the accelerometer on the device. It can be used to calibrate as well as read calibration data. It has a whole bunch of information relative to the phone's location within space. It even has additional settings if you want to try and use Magnetic North and have that be a reference point. There's Movie Player Test, which is used to test kind of the AV playing functions of the phone. In this case, there's actually a DreamWorks trailer. However, it used to be quite common for them to use almost exclusively Pixar movies and trailers for all AV tested related items due to the fact there's a close association between Apple and Pixar since Steve Jobs is one of the three founding members of Pixar. There's JCam, which is a very rudimentary complex way to test the camera. It's used more so to get raw sensor configuration data and more raw photos that aren't totally processed. And it's a pretty good way to test if the camera's functional and how it's functioning. You can see a bunch of settings. There's keyboard tester, which is, you know, as you'd think, a tester of the keyboard. There's actually a really interesting story to how the iPhone keyboard works in its entirety. Perhaps I'll dive into that one day. Ken Casienda is responsible for keyboard and its predictive algorithm that allows you to accurately use tiny keys like this by actually enlarging, enlarging the pressure sensitive areas 
for the key based off of what the phone predicts you will type next. There's a slew more apps, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time digging into each and every one of them. If you guys are interested in a far deeper dive into each and every one app, maybe I'll do a video on that sometime. Let me know in the comments. If we go into settings and scroll down, we can see there are some individual unique settings tabs for each app. However, there are carrier and internal settings. Carrier settings is a lot of baseband in carrier-related heavy information, as it would imply. Internal settings, however, is very, very deep, as you can see, and absolutely chocked full of information. There's application debugging, UI debugging, Springboard, you can enable certain features. You can even disable the legal text on the lock screen, which I just love how it's like, this is not for you, unless you've been granted explicit temp permission to temporarily turn this setting off. It must remain on at all times. You know, you just know there's some engineer who just went, no thank you. And you know what? Maybe he even got reprimanded for it. It's just hilarious to me that they do not want you to disable this, but they still give you the option to it because who listens to Apple anyways? There's CoreOS, which is quite cool. It gives you a lot of device pertinent details. You can see the kernel, the iBoot, that is development fuse silicon, the ECID. Interestingly, this lacks any config. From further digging into the sysconfig, this is a carrier testing device, although it seems to have not been fully set up when it came to writing information, which is somewhat common due to the rush nature and earliness of factories back at the time. The reason why Apple would do this is you need to be able to test certain app settings without modifying the system and certain system settings without modifying the app. And it's a good way to independently enable and disable certain features as you go along the iterative process, changing hardware, software, hardware, software. And it just allows for better more reliable testing in the wild. And it's a really necessary step of prototyping to be able to test all of these features. Nowadays, they've actually changed their development process to where system and app development is done almost completely independently, and it's resulted in a lot fewer bugs in recent builds. Just a quick dive into what it would have been like to be an engineer book pro back in 2010 working on the iPhone. Be sure to let me know if you want a deep dive into you know, all these beautiful apps and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below.